Good morning, everyone. My name is Rod Phillips, and I'm the chair of Civic Action. 2015 is an exceptional time for our region to get things done. We've got new terms of political office at the municipal and the provincial level, a federal election on the horizon, and the Pan Am, Parapan Am games bringing the world to our doorstep. It's an unprecedented four-year window to take action. Welcome to the 2015 Civic Action Summit, the Better City Boot Camp, an intense, action-oriented day where we will set the regional agenda and the pace for change. Hundreds of emerging and senior leaders from all sectors across the greater Toronto and Hamilton area together to work out an action plan to get our region moving. Now, we are dedicated at Civic Action to always expanding the people that are involved in our organization and in our region. So beyond these walls today, I'd like to welcome those who are participating in the Better City Boot Camp via our live stream or in person at our satellite locations at Rexdale Community Hub and the University of Toronto Community Campuses. Civic Action wants all of your help to get our region into shape. We want all of you to participate today, those in the room and those outside the room, using Facebook and Twitter and the Better City Boot, Ta Better City Boot Camp hashtag. Tell us what's working in your communities related to the themes today and what your hopes and dreams are for a better region. At Better City Boot Camp today, we will look at five foundational issues at the core of the health and resilience of our communities. Infrastructure, public space, mental health, affordable housing, and childhood health. Now, how did we select those five issues? We looked at emerging issues from cities, not just locally, but also internationally. And we consulted with almost 100 of our region's leaders, both established and emerging, to determine which were the issues we should focus on to help define those issues and to shape our conversation today. Now, in a moment, my colleague, Savan Pelvetsian, the CEO of Civic Action, is going to speak to those topics and frame the discussion. But before we move forward, we need to reflect on where we came from, where we've been, and what we've accomplished together so far. In 2001, Mayor Mel Lastman had been elected to his second term. The region was facing some difficult times, managing the hangover from amalgamation, the impact of provincial downloading, a decline in tourism, and aging infrastructure. It was out of this need that the first Toronto City Summit was created in 2002, and that civic action was born in 2003 from the mind and vision of the late David Pico and other regional leaders, many of whom I'm pleased to say are with us here today. The founding principle of civic action was action. We were facing some big issues and opportunities, and it was time to stop talking and time to start doing. More than a decade later, the rise of the city region has continued and will continue, and this comes with great opportunities, but also with great challenges. The challenges we face today are arguably bigger and more complex and go beyond our borders. But the good news is that together, we have proven we can make a difference. As the GTHA continues to evolve, one idea remains constant. No one sector can take on these challenges alone. We need multi-sectoral collaboration, and that's why civic action's role as the neutral sandbox for collective action is still so important. Through the summit today and our work over the next four years, we will bring unlikely partners together and surface new and innovative ideas to face these challenges head on. Much like 2001, the time to act is now. I personally challenge all of us, from business, government, labour and the community sectors, to step up, be resourceful and focus on high impact solutions. Now, past summits, which I know many of you have attended, have spun out many high impact initiatives and I want to talk about a few of the activities that Civic Action has ongoing right now. Our race to reduce is one of the largest regional energy challenges in the world. It has shown unprecedented collaboration between office building landlords and tenants to encourage smart energy use while reducing costs and carbon emissions. To date, more than 42% of the Toronto region's office space is participating in the race. Participants have reduced their collective energy use by 7.9% over three years, and that's within two points of our four-year goal of 
That energy reduction is the equivalent of taking 2,700 cars off the road and has saved participants close to $8 million. And just last week, the Race to Reduce won the Energy Globe Award, one of today's most prestigious in international environmental prizes. Another way that we're tackling carbon emissions is with the launch of the Greening Canada Fund, the first voluntary carbon emissions reduction fund for Canadian corporations. Companies could reduce their carbon footprint while supporting community-based carbon reduction projects across Canada. We are pleased to report that the fund has delivered 1.25 million tonnes of high-quality Canadian carbon offset credits to investors, the carbon equivalent of removing 330,000 cars from Canadian roads for one year. Also, through its work in creating and managing the fund, Civic Action has supported the development of Canada's intellectual capital and the systems required to participate fully in what is now the real prospect of a carbon trading regime. The Greening Canada Fund was designed and managed by Green Power Action, so we also, thank, we also have them to thank for the offsetting carbon uh, emission credits that we've uh, purchased for the summit today. They calculated that, a f that approximately four tons of carbon would be generated by the Better City Boot Camp, including getting here, getting back, and this facility, and purchased carbon credits from a City of Guelph project that captures methane from local landfill to generate power. Now, for many in the room, you will be familiar with another of Civic Action's initiatives, which is the Your 32 campaign that brought residents, business, community leaders, and elected officials together to build support for new funding for better regional transit. Thanks to our work and the work of so many others, to date, we have newly elected municipal leaders across the GTHA focused like never before on integrated accessible regional transportation, a historic dedicated investment in regional transportation for the GTA from the provincial government, which has grown to $16 billion in the recent budget, and last week, the federal government's budget committing to a public transit fund that will grow to $1 billion annually, another positive step. Escalator, Jobs for Youth Facing Barriers, which was launched in September, brings more private sector people to the table as part of the solution to youth unemployment, focusing on our region's young people who need the most support. Together, we are leveling the playing field to ensure all youth have access to opportunity and make sure that we don't waste that precious potential in our region. To date, dozens of private sector companies have stepped up and joined our Youth Champions Council, recognizing that each of them, like all of us, have a role to play. Next month, the first cohort of youth will graduate to the workforce from NP Power's innovative, employer-driven IT skills and internship program, which I believe will become a model for the region. We're helping bring the youth job search process to the 21st century, working with LinkedIn Canada to make sure young people can profile themselves professionally and find jobs, particularly that critical first job online. And we're working with the United Way and 10,000 Cups of Coffee to build a regional mentoring initiative that will match private sector employees with unemployed youth to guide, connect, and inspire them. Escalator is another example of civic action doing what it does best, bringing together government, business, labor, and community sectors to create a focused strategy and drive towards on-the-ground results. Beyond these initiatives, our leadership programs continue. Civic Action's Emerging Leaders Network is now a 900-strong team of rising city builders, offering 30-plus events each year to build skills for these emerging leaders. ELN members have led high-impact projects, such as the Pan Am Path, which was profiled in the, uh, in the community market, an 84-kilometer multi-use path to create an active living legacy for the Toronto 2015 Pan Am and Para Pan Am Games. Over 130 rising civic stars have also graduated from Civic Action's Diversity Fellows Program, each receiving 100 hours of intensive training over a one-year program. Through our past summits and the initiatives Civic Action has led, we have shown that bringing a committed group of engaged people together across multiple sectors with a common cause can and does have a huge impact. And this is why Civic Action matters, and this is why our summit today and your presence and the work you're going to do here today matters so much. Now, Civic Action also helps put the wind in the sails of others. I hope you all had a chance to visit the Civic Marketplace powered by RBC this morning, where organizations can showcase their work and you can connect with others that are doing similar work. During the break at lunch, I hope you'll go to the Civic Marketplace for refreshments, and while you're there, take the time to learn, connect, and collaborate. 
You'll also want to visit the ELN Spotlight stage from 12 to 12.20 p.m. to learn about and shape some of the new projects that our emerging leaders have coming down the pipe. And while you're there, drop your card, your business card, into the prize box for a chance to win a Porter, Island, or Porter Airlines prize at the end of the day. Now, events like this don't happen without the help of a great many people, and today we are looking forward to, I know all of us, hearing from all levels of government, including Premier Kathleen Wynne. The generous support of the Ontario government has made this day possible. We'd also like to thank the Friends of Toronto Hospital, NICUs, PCL, the Toronto Police Services Board for their contribution. You will be hearing later from some amazing panelists, speakers, including representatives of Madame Homes, RBC, Trillium Health Partners, who have all gener donated generously to support both the summit and civic actions work. We'd also like to thank our research partners, TD and the Rotman School of Management for helping us make sure that we enter the day with those materials that you received, that we have a strong common fact base to start our conversation. And thank you as well to Alan Hirsch and Next Gen Leaders for designing the day and our conversations and making sure that they stay focused on action. So now it's time to get active, keep fit, and stay focused on the action.